Hi, greetings and welcome back with another video in Roy's desk. Now this video is mainly going to focus on the stability test of this boards LM3886 board and if you want to check the sound test of this boards you can check out this video in here. So in this video we are mainly going to focus on testing out how it performs with the square wave and when we put capacitors of different values at the output of this so that it oscillates and how it handles the oscillations also we are going to do one frequency sweep well i don't have one proper frequency sweep sequence in my function generator but i can test it at different frequencies with the same input amplitude and i can check how flat the response is for this boards so without wasting any further more time let us quickly get started Okay, so I have made the setup for the stability test and there are some prerequisites that we need to do. First one is we cannot have this capacitor in here. This is the low pass filter input capacitor. If you see the circuit, it's basically this capacitor in here. This is the part of the low pass filter which filters out very high frequency noises or interferences. We cannot have this because if you look at a square wave, the rising and the falling edge are very fast and if you have this capacitor in here it will just flatten out that and next thing is with this function generator we cannot control the amplitude of the square wave that's why we will have one potentiometer in here so that we can control the amplitude of it we cannot have a very high peak to peak voltage square wave so as you see this is the square wave output from here 10 kilohertz and we can vary the amplitude with this potentiometer in here and you can see that the square wave is not a very neat square wave it's a bit ugly and it, it is having a lot of noises at the on and off positions but still it will work i guess so we'll feed the square wave to our amplifier the amplifier is connected to one 8 ohm load in here and we will probe the output of the amplifier it's supposed to give out exact square wave of 10 kilohertz just amplified and clean and we are going to put one capacitor of 10 nanofarads and then 0 0.15 microfarads at the output or across the resistor in here so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to force oscillate the amplifier and we want to see how the amplifier dampens out that oscillation and how it can handle a situation when some oscillations happen in the output so let us get started with the test okay so we have the output in the blue line and the input in the yellow line and you can see already that it is having a bit of slower on time and a slower off time in here it's having rounded edges and one more thing is that i am having the output before the thiel network because the thiel networks are there basically to reduce the effect of capacitors in the output so if i just take the 10 nanofarads capacitor and I just hold it across the output nope nothing happens now let us try out this 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor okay you can see there is oscillation at the starting and the ending edge and I don't know why it's also inducing this oscillations into the input but this is how the oscillation is happening but the best part is that it's damping out the oscillation so you can see it's like a resonant frequency damping so it starts oscillating then it dampens out and this is a feature of a good amplifier in here it, it's getting pretty hot because the amplifier needs to work really hard for this sharp edges so now we can dampen out the oscillations even more by just connecting the output after the thiel network so i'll just hold it in here like this see the oscillations are really gone now and this is how the thiel network is very much important for our amplifiers it is one very important component so is the zobel network also so thiel network reduces the effect of capacitance in the output and zobel network reduces the effect of inductance in the output so now we will go into the frequency test so let's get started with the frequency response test as i said earlier i don't have the frequency sweep option in this function generator so what i can do in here is i can input different frequencies same amplitude and we can see if the output value changes or not 
at different frequencies and same amplitude. So we will start from 20 Hz and I tried to set it at 1 volts. It's fluctuating because the output is not a clean sine wave. But still we can get some idea that if the response of this amplifier is flat or not throughout the audio frequency range. So I'll try to keep this V peak to peak close to 1 volts at all different frequencies which I'm going to test it with. And we are going to monitor the output voltage, output peak to peak voltage basically if it changes or not. So let me switch on the amplifier. You can see the output comes up after some time. It's because of the delay circuit that is in there. So at 1 volts, we are getting 19.2 volts. It's fluctuating, we'll take the higher values. So at 1 volts, it's 19.2 volts. At 20 hertz, we'll change the frequency now. It's still the same. Let us go to 40 hertz. Okay, the amplitude, input amplitude has reduced a bit. I'll just try to increase it to 1 volts. Okay, 1 volts. Yeah, it's still the same. Try to 100 hertz or we'll try 80 hertz. So yeah, it's again 19.2, 19.6. It's kind of same. 100 hertz. Yeah, it's same. So we will go to 200 hertz. I have to change the range in here with the jumper. Auto. It is getting hot. Okay, 200 hertz. The input is again down. We'll try to make it 1 volts. Okay, it's again the same, 19.2 to 19.4, we'll try to increase the frequency to 400 hertz. Okay, it's still the same, let us go directly to 1 kilohertz. It's still the same. 19.6 little bit increased we'll do 4 kilohertz now for that i again need to change the range make it auto hmm so the input has gone up now i will reduce it down to 1 volts little bit more down yeah, 1 volts. Okay, now you can see the input has raised quite a bit. So now at 1 volts, we are talking about 21.2 volts. Now I will try to increase the frequency to 10 kilohertz. Okay, it's still the same. Now 15 kilohertz, still the same but the voltage has reduced for the input a bit, I'll try to make it 1 volts, yeah like before 21 point something, then we will try to increase it to 20 kilohertz, make it auto. Reduce the voltage for the input a bit because it's it was 1.020 Yeah, this point yeah 21 point something. So after 4 kilohertz it starts rising a bit So as you see I have tested two different things in this video one is stability test where it performed really well It could handle the oscillations without any problems and another one was the frequency response test which I could do better only if I had a better function generator in here but 
still we can see that there is not much voltage change in the output with different frequency ranges basically in the audio range in the audio spectrum range 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz it's pretty flat response from this amplifier so for me it's really a success in designing this board and definitely this part is also decided then that I'm going to use this boards for the UFO section. The Twitter section was already finished. If you want to check out the video, the video is this one and you can also get the link in the description. So with this, we are very near to the end of the project and what is remaining is deciding which power supply to use. I'm definitely going to use this one. But before this, I thought I'll use 13013 and 19019 supply out of this but now I'm thinking that I'll only use 19019 to power the tweeter section and also the woofer section I need to decide and I'll have only one rectifier circuit with three capacitor in each rail and in between I also have this board ready with the plastic tab lm 3886 IC and I kind of changed some component values in here I I'll test this and then I will talk about it how it performs is it any better than this one or it just some subtle changes and it doesn't affect anywhere in the audio we'll see that but yeah now it's time to wrap up the video thank you for watching this video with all the patience if you have any questions regarding the testing you can just drop that in the comment section and if you like the video please do like share and subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon you will get notifications whenever I upload a new video. We will meet again soon. Till then, bye bye.